Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless as a sign of his coming in the end of the age jesus declares and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars see that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet for a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Vladimir Putin issuing a worrying statement this week as tensions continue to fester between the U.S. and Russia, saying, quote, in the event of a third world war, there will be no winners, including America. Now, this comes as Russia escalates their military offensive in Ukraine. The president of Belarus, meanwhile, has confirmed that his country received tactical nuclear weapons from Russia, so how concerned should we be, especially as Putin reportedly tells the West to go to hell? Joining us now with reaction is former U.S. defense intelligence officer and author of Putin's playbook, Rebecca Koffler. Rebecca, great to see you this morning. Great to see you all. What do you make of this, uh, not just saber rattling, but um, almost taking the saber out of its sheath in terms of Vladimir Putin sending nuclear weapons to Belarus? This is a very concerning development. Uh, it's strategic messaging by Putin uh, to Washington to back out of Ukraine, to stop arming Ukraine, it is driven by fear of losing this war that he cannot afford because the outcome of this war is existential for him. Uh, Russia considers Ukraine as part of its strategic security perimeter. It cannot allow NATO to get as close just like we wouldn't allow China or Russia or Iran to get close as close to Mexico, or Canada. That's, yes. that's incredibly, honestly, terrifying. You know, for oh, yes. Vladimir Putin to consider what's happening in Ukraine an existential threat, and mm -hmm. for him to begin to talk about the use of nuclear weapons. We can put on screen, by the way, the number of nuclear weapons uh, at, at, at any hand for given countries. Russia's got the most. At the top. Yeah, so in what's the off-ramp for him facing an existential threat. So right now, no one is even talking about off-ramp. Uh, well, in fact, it's quite the opposite. In May, a senior NATO official, Rob Bauer, announced that NATO has switched the alliance to wartime footing. Putin has always thought, and the Kremlin did, and the general staff, that we are seeking regime change in Russia. Everyone hates Putin, he's an unlikable guy, and that is why he has prepared this terrifying doctrine. They are looking for vulnerabilities in U.S. Uh, communication networks, in U.S. critical infrastructure, in U.S. satellites, and this is why you see these uh, cyber espionage, cyber attack, including on our Department of Energy that manages our nuclear infrastructure and sets our nuclear policy. The larger question, which I just I find unavoidable throughout this conversation, which mm -hmm. is, okay, we got a man who considers this entire relationship, this entire war, this entire interaction existential. Correct. And if he if at the end of this story, it's the end of Putin, then he will no doubt use nuclear weapons to remain in existence, to remain in power, to remain alive. The U.S. has to find a way for that not to be the case because nuclear war cost, as he points out, is a no-win situation even for America. Absolutely. Well, the first thing to clarify to Americans is that Russia is not targeting U.S. homeland with nuclear weapons, right? The doctrine was developed for Putin to authorize a nuclear strike on the battlefield in Ukraine. Mm. The problem is with this thinking is this. As war gaming shows, and uh, as you said, I'm a former DI intelligence officer, and we conducted dozens of war games simulating a U.S.-Russia conflict. Once the first tactical, even if it's tactical, uh, nuke gets popped on the battlefield, no one, everybody's gonna overreact because all of these states that own nuclear uh, weapons have missile warning systems tracking that stuff. Yeah, and then the dominoes begin to fall. Exactly. You just nailed it. Spins out of control. Every war game has shown It's hard not this. to feel like the dominoes have already begun to fall, Rebecca. It, exactly. Uh
It seems as though we are on the verge of World War III. Jesus told us in the last days there would be war between the nations. Are we seeing the stage setting taking place to fulfill this prophecy? If so, then we're close to the time Jesus refers to as the worst time in the history of the world as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. If we are that close to the tribulation, then the world is about to see war the likes of this planet has never seen before. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal, war will be unleashed. Resulting from these wars will be famine, pestilence, and death as Jesus breaks the third and fourth seals. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion, meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100-pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to 4 billion. Proverbs 29.2 When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. All right, lots of big stories out there getting little coverage by pretend journalists locked on the Trump indictment, conveniently to the exclusion of all of Biden's disasters. Like the fact that China is building a powerful spy post in Cuba just 100 miles from Miami, no big deal. Or that would probably lose a war defending Taiwan against China right now because we've sent so much of our own weaponry and our own munitions to Ukraine. This from Politico. The Biden administration has been slow to respond to what's minimally required to prevent an Indo-Pacific catastrophe, which is the need to rapidly build a better deterrent, especially new stockpiles of munitions that would convince China it could be too costly to attack Taiwan. Do we even have the capacity to spit out munitions to make up for what we've sent to Zelensky? A swift response may not be possible in large part because of how shrunken the U.S. manufacturing base has become since the Cold War. Yet despite these disturbing tales of American military decline, the White House, they don't seem concerned. They have other priorities. Welcome to the White House and happy Pride! Feels nice, doesn't it? Okay. <laughs> Oh, I love you guys. I'm so happy to be here. I just want to say what an honor, and I know what a big deal it is that I'm here. The largest pride celebration the White House has ever had. Happy Pride! Now, the extravaganza really began in earnest the week before, where there wasn't any dancing, but the pitch was the same. It's an honor to represent the Department of Defense at the 12th Annual Pride Employee Resource Group event to acknowledge the contributions of service members and department civilians in the lesbian, gay, transgender, and queer community. As a cisgender woman in the Department of Defense, I can personally attest to the importance of allies and advocacy. The open inclusion of Americans like me Combat-ready transgender volunteers enhances our readiness, promotes innovation, and fosters a culture of respect and understanding that makes the armed forces better. Romans chapter 1 tells us God has revealed to mankind that he is the creator of all things, and that he has made it known to mankind that they are without excuse through his creation that he exists. God demands that we worship him and recognize him as the creator. And when a society does not glorify him as God, he gives them up to three phases of judgment. Romans 1 verse 24 says, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts. The first phase of judgment is an impure heart. The second phase of judgment is of the body, verses 26 and 27. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. The third phase of judgment is in verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind, 
to do those things which are not fitting. First, the heart is rotten, then the body follows, and then the mind goes. The moral law of God written on the heart has literally been stomped out and replaced with cultural immorality. Immorality now goes in every direction. The mind is corrupt. People don't think right. They advocate all the wretched things and depreciate all the virtuous things. And what flows out of this pornographic, homosexual, depraved culture? All evil. Verses 29 through 32. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. It is evident by looking at society that we are in the third and final judgment on America. In these last days, society has not retained God in their knowledge, and in return, God has given them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. When a nation tells God that they no longer want or need him and actually tell him to go away so they can wallow in their sins, eventually God says, okay. Well, unfortunately, things don't seem to be getting better. In fact, they're getting worse. The Army will miss its recruiting target this year by a staggering 25%. We are not going to make that goal. We are doing everything we can to get as close to it as possible, but we are going to fall short of that. Now, most other branches are in a recruiting mess as well. It's a full-blown crisis. But the Air Force's answer to this? Well, check out this tweet. That airman isn't saluting the American flag, but instead is standing in front of something called the Progress Pride Flag. Wouldn't it be irresponsible not to question why our Pentagon is spending so much time inventing imaginary enemies when we actually have real ones? LGBTQ plus and other diverse communities are under attack just because they are different. Hate for hate's sake. We must be prepared to confront any such challenge directly. Service members do not die because the service shows pride, love, and rainbows. Service members don't die because they do. Pride saves lives. Now this Pentagon supported message is clear. Any deviation from their worldview is a serious threat and it will be dealt with as such and it will be stamped out. That includes laws duly passed by state legislatures to stop the sexual exploitation and indoctrination of school children. This is Lieutenant General Deanna Burt from the Space Force. Since January of this year, more than 400 anti-LGBTQ plus laws have been introduced at the state level. That number is rising and demonstrates a trend that could be dangerous for service members, their families, and the readiness of the force as a whole. When I look at potential candidates, say for squadron command, I strive to match the right person to the right job. I consider their job performance and relevant experience first. However, I also look at their personal circumstances and their family is also an important factor. It's a good match for a job does not feel safe being themselves and performing at their highest potential at a given location. Or if their family could be denied critical health care due to the laws in that state. I am compelled to consider a different candidate and perhaps less qualified. The Lieutenant General believes that U.S. readiness will somehow be improved if concerned parents, including many vets, are branded as haters? And who would those parents want commanding their sons or daughters in battle? A man as hostile to their values and beliefs as Joe Biden? We have some hysterical and, I would argue, prejudice people who are engaged in all what you see going on around the country. It's, a, it's an appeal to fear, and it's an appeal that is totally, thoroughly unjustified and ugly. These are our kids. These are our neighbors. It's cruel. Now, how exactly is this going to work in practice? Does he and the other woke activists in his White House, do they not realize how much the military depends on the South and the Midwest for its fighting force? Now, why does it seem like inclusion only works one way for these people? Progressives want to do to our military what they've done to every other aspect of our culture. They want to poison it. The military was one of the last bastions of traditionalism left in America, and that fact was in part what made a career in the service so attractive to so many. Most served to defend the American way of life. 
They don't serve to host drag shows on military bases. The DOD was shamed into having to announce that it would no longer host drag shows at U.S. Military, military installations to celebrate Pride Month. But don't consider this some big victory, because the only reason those shows were canceled is because GOP senators complained. And clearly, the top brass is spooked by all this activism. We're all about readiness now and readiness in the future and modernization. Uh, I think the accusations of woke are, are, are grossly over-exaggerated. We're, we're not a woke army, we're a ready army. That constant drumbeat that we sometimes hear about a weak military, a woke military, is a little bit of a negative drip, drip, drip that is undermining our recruiting at a time where we really can't afford that. Ah, so publicizing what they're actually doing with your tax dollars, that's the problem, not the woke obsession itself. And not certainly not implying that half the country is bigoted if they disagree with their new approach. God gives mankind a dire warning for the acts of homosexuality in 2 Peter 2.6, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. Jehovah said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have died. The cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were full of evil, licentiousness, rampant with murder, and indulgence in extravagant pleasures. They reached the point of clamoring against God, of fighting against Him, and raging His disposition. Where are the men which came into you this night? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. After the angels took Lot and his family out of the city, burning sulfur rained down from the sky. The raging fire lit up the heavens. Hurry! Hurry up! Oh, my house! Our lives are on the line. Who cares about the house? I'm not afraid. Just one look. Just one look. We now live in an Isaiah 520 world where evil is good and good is evil, where the sin of being a homosexual or transgender is openly celebrated and even glorified. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of homosexuality that is sweeping the world today. Jesus said he would return at a time when society parallels the days of Lot, as we read in Luke 17, 28 through 30. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. To find out what parallels our days with the days of Lot, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis 19, 1-5 Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and said, My lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly. So they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread. And they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. The term know them isn't a friendly handshake and how are you, it is to know them in a sexual way. What parallels our days with the days of Lot is homosexuality. One thing you never mess with is someone's children. They think because it's Pride Month they can do whatever they want to your children. The trans flasher fondled himself on the south lawn of the White House. Hairy, bare-chested men spank each other in broad daylight. The drag queen takeover, whether it's the classroom, libraries, your favorite brunch spot, it's on. Dress up, flash, spank whoever you want. But why do my children have to watch you? Now, in Charlottesville, Virginia, grade school kids 
were forced to go to a Pride Month celebration, and this is what fourth graders read. It stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer. Cool. N is for non-binary, a word for a person who doesn't see themselves as a particular gender. O is for out. Being out means telling other people about how about your gender or who you love. T is for trans. Some people whose gender does not match what's written on their birth certificate when they were born. A nine-year-old shouldn't know what non-binary means. I don't even know what that means. Parents had no idea their nine-year-old kids were reading about lesbians and transsexuals. O is for coming out of the closet? Are you kidding me? In Virginia? Primetime contacted the school. The school stands by it. The school stands by O is for coming out. D is not for dominatrix. Do you plan on talking to your nine-year-old about men having sex with men? About thruples? I don't. But your public school's talking to your nine-year-old about it. Oh, you don't think they are? How do you know? You don't know. You're being sliced out of your child's life by the perverted hand of the state. In California, if you're a parent and you don't let your son chop off his manhood, a new bill classifies you as abusive and you could lose custody of your child. If you don't let your nine-year-old transition from a boy to a girl, California scraps your parental rights. You're deemed a child abuser. Parents are furious. Parents can easily gain the system and use gender as retaliation against each other. What happens when one parent will socially affirm the child but will not agree to medicalize? Does the parent willing to do more transitioning prevail? If it passes, it will be child abuse if one does not affirm a child's gender identity and not just in custody cases. The triad of words, health, Safety and welfare will, used by, will be used by CPS, judges, and police to take children away from parents like me who knew better than to concretize their child's gender identity. A school library in Roxbury, New Jersey, is brimming with sexually explicit and graphic books for kids, like this one. It has pictures of two young boys having oral sex. Now, do we want porn in a children's library? What is the educational benefit of talking about a fourth grader who gave a to another boy? It's not simply perversion or grooming, it's mental grade. What benefit is a to a child who's preparing for the ACT or the SAT? Is that going to help them get into college? Is that going to help them get into another school? No, it's not. But you're sitting in your seats, you no, have an authority, but we're going to vote every last one of them. Right? Yeah! The president says keep the porn in your kid's library. Choose love over hate, unity over disunion, and progress over retreat. Choosing to remember history, not erase it. To read books, not ban them. No matter how hard some people try. Would Joe Biden read this book to a nine-year-old? Would he show a nine-year-old a picture of underage gay oral sex? Would you, Joe? Because adults haven't been protecting children from this craziness. Children are starting to revolt. Students are revolting against Pride Month. They're sick of having pride shoved in their face every day. Now, here's how kids reacted in a California math class after their teachers started playing a gay pride video. Knock it off. She's showing students lesbian kissing, and she's saying the students are being inappropriate for not wanting to see it. Watch this gay pride video or you're getting detention. That's not very inclusive, Ms. Clark. Now, in Massachusetts, a middle school through a radical gay pride celebration, they pushed students to wear rainbow clothes. The kids didn't want to wear rainbow clothes. They formed a counter protest, and instead of wearing rainbow clothes, they dressed in red, white, and blue.
the group of students started chanting, my pronouns are USA, and tore down some rainbow banners, while another group of students was setting up a pride display. The school said that wearing red, white, and blue and chanting, my pronouns are USA, made the gay and transsexual students feel uncomfortable. Oh, so only certain students aren't able to feel uncomfortable. Certain students need to be protected from feeling uncomfortable. Having students play gay pride dress up is fine, but wearing red, white, and blue creates a hostile environment? Come on. Now imagine the reaction if the school had students dress up in camouflage on Veterans Day. Now, how did the school react to this? Well, they're hiring a diversity task force. First order of business, students can be proud of their gender, but not proud of their country. Just as in the days of Lot, not only is homosexuality widely accepted today, but it's being taught to our kids, just like in Sodom, as we read in verse 4. The men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. Young is the Hebrew word, nar, which means a boy, from the age of infancy to adolescence. There are many people within the church who are teaching that homosexuality is not a sin, when scripture clearly says it is. This is another sign Jesus gave to look for prior to his second coming, as we read in Matthew 24, 11. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Homosexuality is strongly condemned in the Bible. Ezekiel 16, 49 through 50. Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, and an abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw fit. What was this prideful abomination committed before God? The answer is found in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 18.22 You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20.13 If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death their blood shall be upon them. God also offers forgiveness to those who are living a life of homosexuality as we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you're a sinner. B, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C, call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is Accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready 
when he makes his personal appearance. My God! What if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.